Welcome to day 23 of the 2024 Advent of Code. Today is a graph theory problem. We're given the graph as a list of edges between computers, and each line represents a connection. So for example, KHTC represents a two-way connection between the computer named KH and the computer named TC. Land parties usually involve multiplayer games, so we're trying to locate groups of connected computers. We're going to start by looking for each set of three computers where each computer in the set is connected to the other computers. And so in our example, we have 12 such sets, and we are pretty sure that the chief historian's computer's name will start with the letter T. So we want to look at how many sets of three computers have at least one computer's name starting with the letter T. And this will be our answer for part one. So the edges are just the input. We'll process it by taking each line and then for each line in that, we're going to take the line, strip it of white space, and split it along the dash. That will give us a pair, and so we will make our edge list just a list of pairs. Like so. So that gives us a list of pairs. And now we want to convert the graph format because this is not very useful. We want to convert it into a map from each node to its set of neighbors. So we can call this one connections, which will be a map from each computer's name to a set of its connections. And so that map is going to be populated by filling in the edges. So for each x, y in edge, firstly, if x is not in the connections map, then we're going to add it with initial empty set. And same thing goes for y. And then we'll add each of the two computers to the other one's connection set. So connections x dot add y and connections y dot add x. Now that we have our map in a more useful format, we will try to find all groups of three computers connected together. So the way we're going to do this is we're just going to look through each node. For each node, we're going to look at all of its connections. And then for each of that one's connections, we'll just look for any that are not equal to the first one, but are also connected to the first one. Basically, we start from any given node. We look at its connections. That's our secondary node. And then we look at its connections, one of which is going to be the first node. So we're going to skip that case. And then we want to look for one that is connected back to the first node. And if we can find any, those will be our sets. And so we can just keep track of a running total. Or rather, we need to keep track of the sets because we need to avoid the triple counting. So sets equals an initial empty set for x in the list of all nodes. We will go through its connections. So for y in connections of x, then we'll go through each of its. For z in connections of y, if x is not equal to z and x is connected to y, then we will add it to the set. What we're doing here is, in order to avoid triple counting, we're going to deduplicate by taking x, y, z and sorting it, and then converting it to a tuple so we can add it to our sets. And that will give us a list of sets, and now we just need to count how many of them start with the letter T. So we can say, the length of each set in sets. So for S in sets, we're going to keep only the ones where one of the computer's names starts with the letter T. So if any computer name starts with T for computer name in S. Basically for each set, if any of the computer names in the set start with t, we will add it to the output list and then we'll just take the length to get the number. Now another way you could avoid triple counting is by recognizing that because this list runs through the connections in all of the orders, we're going to count each one six times. And so what we can do instead is like so, um, if x is not z and x is in connections and any cn dot starts with t for cn in x, y, z, then total plus equals six, or sorry, one, 
And then if we print out the total, we can see that we get 42, which makes sense because each one of the connections will be counted six times. And so we can just divide that by six. And that also works for giving us our answer to part one. The reason I didn't do this is because this assumes that we're going to be still looking for computers of length three and just using this solution where we actually keep track of the sets is more extendable to part two. So this works, same speed basically. So it's not really an optimization to do it the other way. It just sets you up for potentially taking longer to convert to part two. Now for part two, it appears that there are too many results to go through them all, 1,200 in our case. We're going to need to find the land party a different way. And so what we're going to do is we're figuring that all of the employees are probably at the LAN party. If true, the LAN party is going to be the largest set of computers connected to each other. So for example, in our example, these four computers are all connected to each other and represent the single largest set, C O D E K A and T A. The posters say that the password to get into the LAN party is the name of every computer in the LAN party sorted alphabetically joined together with commas. And so in our example, the password is code kata. This is not a coincidence. Code kata is a coding platform. I have never used it before, so I'm not going to endorse it because I don't really know what it is, but I'll probably check this out afterwards since this caught my eye in today's problem. So I'm assuming that's there for a reason. So in order to find this, we're going to basically do this thing again, but we're just not going to stop at three. And so the only way to do an arbitrary number of nested loops, of course, is recursion. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make a function that we can call to just populate the set with all of the possible connections. And so the way we're going to do that is like so. So we'll create a function called search, which will take two values. The first one will be the computer that we're currently looking at. We will call that the node. And the second is the set of existing connections. So we'll call that required. Basically what this does is it will attempt to add the node to the existing connected set, or rather the node will already be in the connected set. This just tells us the current computer to look at, and we will try to look at all of its neighbors. So as a demonstration of this example, let's suppose we have these four that are connected. So these four are all fully connected. Initially, we're going to provide this computer as well as a set containing just this, and it's going to look at each of its neighbors. For each one that it finds that is connected to everything in the required set, it is going to look at, it is going to recursively invoke the search function on this computer with this set as the requirements. So then we'll look at the neighbors for this one, add it to the set if it is connected to everything in the set, and then add it to the set and recursively call the search function on this computer with this set. And then we'll look at its neighbors, see if it's connected to all of the items in the set. If so, we will expand the set again and then search for all of its neighbors. But in this case, we won't have any more that aren't already in the set. So this is how this code is going to look. For each neighbor in the connections off of the node, we need two things. Firstly, the neighbor cannot already be in the set of connected items because we don't want to bounce back and forth between nodes. So if the neighbor is in the required set, we skip it. And then the other requirement we need is that the neighbor is connected to everything in the set. So the straightforward way to do this is like so. If all neighbor in connections of query for query in required, then that is the correct case. So we can say if not all neighbor in connections query for query and requirements continue, that basically says if the neighbor is connected to each item in the requirement, then we continue to this line here. Another way of writing this, of course, is like so, because this is asking if every item is connected to the neighbor, which of course is the same as asking if the neighbor is connected to every item. And so another way you could rewrite this is you're basically asking, is every item in one set in another set? Python has a built-in operator for that. And the set theory notation is this. This is the subset equal operator, which asks, 
Is it true that every item in A is in B? The strict subset operator basically is the same thing, but A and B are not allowed to be equivalent sets. In Python, you write these as less than or equal to and less than. You can use these operators together with sets. And so you could also write this as if query is less, if required is less than or equal to connections of neighbor, which basically asks, is it the case that every item in this is in this? And so of course you need to use not here to invert the case to skip. Or you could also ask if neighbor not in required and required is less than or equal to connections of neighbor and do it positively instead of negatively. In the interest of keeping the code a bit more readable for the upload, I will go back to this method like so, but I just wanted to show off a Python feature since I got the chance to here. So if neither of these are the case, then what that means is we have found a new node that is not currently in our set of fully connected computers, but is connected to every item in that. Therefore, meaning that the required set with neighbor included is a fully connected set, which means we can add it to our tracker. And so we're going to add it like so. We're going to do this at the top of the search function to make it a bit easier. But basically, we're again going to sort the list of connected computers so that we avoid duplicates. And then if the key is already in the set, we'll skip it to avoid double counting. And sorry, we'll return to avoid double counting. And this is important not just for double counting, but also to avoid the extra recursion. That's the important part. And then we'll add the sorted list of connected computers to the set. Here's what we'll call the recursion step. To recurse, we're going to do a search on the neighbor with the new connected set. So the first parameter is going to be neighbor, and the second parameter is going to be the requirement with the neighbor added on. Now there are two ways you could do this. You can make a copy, like copy equals set required, copy.add neighbor, and then use copy here. That's not very elegant or Pythonic. A different way you could do this is use the splat operator to make a new set that includes the required and the neighbor like. So this is essentially the same as doing the copy method, but a bit more Pythonic. And my personal preferred method is to do this. Now this might be a bit less clear, but the way this works is that this is the union operator. So in Python, sets have a lot of great operators that exist in set theory. The union operator takes two sets and returns the set of all items contained in either one of them. Basically, it's like adding two lists together, but just like with normal sets, you still won't get duplicates. This in Python is represented with the single pipe. This is also used for bitwise or, which makes sense because it's asking for items that are in A or in B. The other way to do it, it sorry, not the other way to do it. Another thing that exists is intersection, which asks for items that are in both sets. That is done using Python's ampersand, which is also used for bitwise and. There is also set difference, which asks for all items that are in A but not in B. In Python, that's simply just minus. There's set symmetric minus. I don't actually know how that's denoted in set theory. It asks for all items that are in one set or the other, but not both. Basically it's A but not B and also B but not A. This is exclusive or it's asking for items that are in A or B, but exclusively so. And so it's using the same operator as bitwise XOR, which is the caret. And then like I mentioned earlier, there is also the, uh, what was it? There is also the operator for subset, which returns a Boolean value that's less than or equal to, that's less than. And then the inverse operations also exist, which are superset equal and superset. So Python has a lot of nice features for working with sets. So if you are heavily working with set theory, Python is definitely one of, in my opinion, the best programming languages to use with it. If you're working in a different language that doesn't have this nicely, you probably just want to do something similar to 
this. But this is my personal preferred method to do this in Python. Although I must say this is also quite nice. So maybe for a change, I'll use this one in my final code. So now what we've basically done is we've made a recursive function that will take a computer that is being searched actively and a list of the, a set of the current connected block of computers. If this is a new block that we have not seen before, we'll add it to the set of sets. And then for each neighbor that is connected to the node, we'll skip any that are already in the block. We'll skip any that are not fully connected with the block. And if we get to this point, we now have a new fully connected block consisting of everything here and the new neighbor, which means we will recursively search that with this set. And this set will be added into the set of sets at the top of the recursion. Finally, we just need to identify the optimal set by taking the, I forgot to actually search. We then need to search every single node individually. So we do for X in connections, search X with the set initially just containing X itself. And now if we print out the sets, we've searched every single node for all of the things that are fully connected to it. And if we get the max of sets with key being the length, this basically finds the maximum set where we judge each set by its length. That gives us this, and we just need to sort it and then join it on a comma. And that gives us our answer for part two. So I'm unfortunately not the biggest fan of this problem because the first part is unfortunately just pretty straightforward. And the second part is one of those graph theory algorithms problems where if you know how to solve it, you can get it pretty fast. But if you don't, it requires a lot of time thinking and AI always knows these algorithms. This is very much a interview problem. When I say interview problem, I basically mean a problem where it kind of just tests your knowledge of algorithms and basically requires you to apply a bit of problem solving to figure out the algorithm. And LLMs tend to have a good time with those. So today's leaderboard is also unfortunately pretty shit. But we've talked about that many times this year. That's all I'll say for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.